Hello everyone and welcome to 17th lecture of uh, digital image processing of remote sensing data. And this topic uh, which we are going to cover in this lecture is SAR interferometry or INSAR technique. Uh, uh, most of the time we have spent in this so far in this course uh, on uh, optical remote sensing. Now we, we would like to spend some time, uh, basic things we have already discussed on radar remote sensing or microwave remote sensing, but uh, SAR interferometry a new technique. So it is very important to discuss here and it has got good uh, applications, uh, few applications I will be showing at the end of uh, today's topic. Uh, so this is a SAR interferometry basically synthetic aperture radar interferometry and uh, as you know that the uh, there are two major types of remote sensing one is active remote sensing and passive remote sensing. So passive remote sensing, optical remote sensing, thermal infrared and other they fall in uh, uh, passive my, um, um, remote sensing technique whereas microwave remote sensing is active remote sensing also radar remote sensing. So microwave when we say uh, we are talking about 1 centimeter to 1 meter in wavelength. So very large wavelength compared to uh, visible or infrared or thermal infrared uh, which encompasses both active and passive forms of remote sensing. So uh, not only microwave is uh, active but there, there are portions of microwave uh, where a passive microwave is also possible because in some natural objects also emits uh, mi energy in microwave part of EM spectrum. But that part we are not going to discuss, so we will discuss mainly active microwave one. As, as you know that the longer wavelength microwave radiation can penetrate through cloud cover, haze, dust and all but the heaviest rainfall because uh, uh, if uh, natural objects or particles which are smaller in size and are in present in space but uh, longer wavelength microwave radiation it is for it uh, for this kind of a radiation it is easy to penetrate even a microwave can penetrate through a dry soil up to few meters and based on this uh, Saraswati uh, old courses of Saraswati river in parts of uh, Haryana and uh, some parts of Punjab have been discovered in past just based on microwave remote sensing. So uh, longer wavelength are not susceptible to atmospheric scattering which affects shorter optical wavelengths. So in uh, shorter in optical wavelengths in the visible infrared near infrared uh, there are a lot of uh, problems and therefore we have got limited atmospheric windows. But since uh, longer wavelength so question of atmospheric window does not come here. And uh, this uh, uh, property allows detection of microwave energy under almost all weather and environmental conditions. So this is another advantage with the active microwave remote sensing that in almost in all weather condition whether it is rainy or cloudy and day or night data can be acquired. And uh, as uh, mentioning earlier that uh, active microwave remote sensing where the signal is sent by the sensor itself and then back scattering comes it is collected by the uh, receiver and then images are formed. Uh, whereas uh, as we can see also uh, that uh, the pulse uh, is sent and then return whatever is the left uh, or back scattered which is also received. So likewise line by line pixel by pixel image is formed. But uh, the images which we see in optical or near infrared thermal infrared the construction of those images is entirely different than in microwave. In passive remote sensing or passive microwave what we see that uh, whatever the emission which is coming from the surface is recorded by the sensor. So we will not spend much time here. Now we come to the passive microwave sensor and detects naturally emitted microwave energy. There used to be a satellite uh, or sensor SM, SM, SMMI or SMMR which were capable of recording uh, microwave radiation in passive mode. 
and the advantage of such a thing uh, that they can be used to estimate the snow depth and other things which is otherwise impossible with any other remote sensing technique. So, passive microwave sensor detects naturally emitted microwave energy related to the temperature and moisture properties of emitting objects or surface within its field of view. Passive microwave sensors are typically radiometers or scanners and on antenna is used to detect and record microwave energy and because of the wavelengths are so long very large wavelength the, the energy available is quite small compared to optical wavelength and thus field of view must be large detect enough energy to record a signal and this creates a problem of coarser resolution. So, these sensors had very coarse resolution even 30 kilometer by 30 kilometer you had a uh, pixel. So, 30 kilometer resolution we are talking, but uh, the information which one could extract from these was very important like snow depth and snow cover information. Snow cover information is possible with optical remote sensing, but snow depth information is not possible any way except with passive microwave sensors. So, um, um, provide uh, this active microwave remote sensing provides their own source of microwave radiation to illuminate the target and this is what uh, uh, nowadays is very popular mainly of two types again uh, one is imaging and another one is non-imaging and uh, the most common form of imaging active microwave sensor is radar which is radar is an abbreviation which stands for radio detection and ranging and as you can see it's a ranging so it measures the uh, the uh, the time taken by the uh, signals to receive back by the sensor and based on that it calculates many things so the sensor transmits a microwave or radio signal towards the target and detects the back scattered portion of the signal and the strength of backscatter signal is measured to discriminate between different targets and the time delay between the transmitted and reflected signals determines the distance or range to the target. So, this is how uh, it uh, creates image. Here in uh, this one we can see that the, 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 the air though it is a airborne uh, sensor, but does not matter it's the same thing happens in case of satellite that they did and the signals are transmitted and then in the blue band, blue curves you are seeing the back scattered which is going back and uh, this is how uh, different uh, targets or different objects on on surface of the earth will behave differently in microwave region and they will be recorded differently so this is how the images are formed so radar is essentially a ranging or distance measuring de uh, device is consists fundamentally of a transmitter, a receiver and antenna and an electronic system to process and record the data. Earlier I uh, this mentioned that radar is a ranging or, uh, ranging or distance measuring device and here we take the advantage in later on in the SAR interferometry where we measure the changes in the distance in through the interferometric technique. So, that is exploited later in SAR interferometry. The transmitter generates successive short burst or pulses of microwave like uh, here and at regular interval which are focused by the antenna into the beam and the radar beam illuminates the surface obliquely at a right angle to the motion of the platform and the antenna receives a portion of the transmitted energy reflected or back scattered from the various objects within the illumination an illuminated beam and by measuring the time delay between the transmission of a pulse and the reception of the back scattered or echo from the different targets their distance from radar and thus location can be determined. And this is something like uh, a bat when it sends the signal and uh, ultrason ultrasonic signals and then back scattered so by which it can uh, estimate the distance of if even if a flying object. So, the almost the same concept here is our uh, our satellites are also moving in their orbits or aircrafts. So, it is the same concept except that it is in microwave region as the sensor platform moves forward recording and processing of best cut signals builds up a two dimensional image of the surface. 
this is the uh, there are different bands of uh, frequency bands which are involved in microwave and as you can see that uh, there is a x band there is a c band s band l band and some other bands are there so the most popular one are x band and c band which belongs to a uh, part of microwave region so microwave region of a spectrum is quite large not like visible or infrared where you are having a very small part of em spectrum available but it is a large part is available relative to as i have mentioned and uh, the penetration is the key factor for the selection of the wavelength so uh, there are specially designed missions are there for microwave so some people go for x band some people go for c band and uh, c band is also very popular in sar interferometry few examples uh, we will be seeing about this one as well so like uh, the first microwave uh, fully operational satellite was ERS 1 and later on ERS 2 which has the synthetic aperture radar uh, system and that was in C band A recent uh, the Indian one the rice set 1 is also a C band satellite and uh, the C band is also on the sentinel uh, which is a European satellite and providing the data free of cost to any user so that is the biggest advantage with sentinel. Uh, and, and the data is available for C band. The X band is also in TerraSAR, uh, Cosmos, SkyMed. There are K band which are in military domain, not in civilian domain. But this uh, about 5 or 5.6 centimeter uh, wavelength, which is uh, either in radar set, NV set, SR was again very popular. There are some other uh, sensors on different you exploiting different bands of uh, a microwave region. But the most uh, current and popular one is nowadays is the Sentinel, which is used uh, directly for interferometry. So that we will see little later. So irrespective of wavelength, radar signals can transmit horizontal or vertical electric field vectors and receive either horizontal or vertical. So, this is another advantage that you can have both together and the basic physical processes responsible for like polarized. So, horizontal, horizontal or vertical, vertical return uh, quasi specular surface reflection and for instance calm water that is without waves appear black and uh, the cross polarized that HB or VH and that is horizontal vertical or vertical horizontal return is usually weaker and often associated with different reflections due to for instance surface roughness. So, for what kind of applications uh, one is intending accordingly the polarization is chosen. These, this is the example like uh, this is the horizontal polarization, this is the vertical polarization which we see or in if we combined it that uh, the signals are from the satellite are coming in horizontal polarization while return beam is in the um, vertical polarization. So, overall which is say we say HV polarization. So, thus there can be four combinations of both transmit and receive polarization as follows that uh, you are having horizontal horizontal vertical vertical horizontal vertical and uh, vertical horizontal. Now, radar image in a digital radar image, each uh, pixel gives a complex number. So, it's, as I have already mentioned, it is not like uh, optical remote sensing where the, uh, the whole thing is very systematic and easy to understand. But here, the each pixel is made from a complex uh, number and that number carries two main important things. One is the amplitude of the uh, wavelength and also the phase information and this phase delay whenever there is a phase delay or uh, about a when the satellite has sent a signals later on and uh, the object is shifted or changed there will be a delay or additional information or something and that can that is exploited in SAR interferometry. So, this complex number contains two important things was in one is amplitude another one is the phase information about the microwave field back scattered by all the scattering scatterers like rock 
vegetation, rocks, vegetation, building, etc. And within the corresponding resolution cell projected on the ground. So, uh, uh, depending like uh, you can have a 30 meter resolution or uh, maybe larger resolution is possible, but ve relatively very high resolution as compared to uh, your visible uh, is not possible yet. So, 30 meter is the most common currently spatial resolution with microwave remote sensing. So, different rows of the image are associated with different azimuth locations, whereas the different columns indicate different slant range locations. We will see what is slant range here. So, uh, suppose this is the flight path. So, this is the slant range. This is the range on the horizontal plane and this is the altitude. So, uh, uh, with this triangle, uh, this is the slant range. And this is the incident angle, main beam the coverage area or swath width is this much. So, we also say far range and near range. So, the Im imaging geometry of radar system is different from framing and scanning system commonly implied by remote sensing. So, here the image acquisition is very different and uh, instead of having a simple pixel value where you are having just simple one pixel value either having reflection or emission, but here it is a complex number which is having amplitude and phase information both together. So, the image here is completely different, data acquisition system is completely different and therefore, the applications are also different. Now, we come to the SAR interferometry or mainly interferometry which a, a satellite which is having synthetic aperture radar can observe the same area from slightly different looks, look angles and this can uh, be advantageous to create an interferogram. So, this can be done either simultaneously that is that uh, you are having, you are looking the same ground area with two different angles at the same time when satellite is flying and it has happened in case of SRTM which was a specific mission which lasted for about uh, 18 days and has covered the 80 percent of the globe except the polar regions and have acquired the data interferometric data of the entire globe uh, for 80 percent of the globe and this uh, uh, this was mounted the two radars mounted on the same platform. So, they were transmitting and collecting the data at the same time, but it, it is also possible to collect later on. That means, uh, uh, today there is a overpass by the satellite and probably maybe after 35 days there might be another overpass and by which you can take again data. So, the advantage becomes that in between these 35 days if some natural disastrous events have occurred, then you, you know that there will be some ground deformations and basically radar is a ranging technique and therefore, uh, that there will be a changes in the distance uh, between satellite and the land. So, suppose there is an earthquake, now the land has subsided because of earthquake event. So, this range will increase, there will be a phase delay and that can be exploited to create a beautiful interferograms which will we see the examples. So, uh, it is possible to collect data with two different uh, 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 radars mounted at the same time or maybe different times with two different angles. So, the purpose here we should have data with two different angles and the in interferometric SAR or we also called as in SAR in sort allows accurate measurement of the radiation travel path and a, because it is coherent. The coherency is another condition which is required that means there should not be much seasonal change and so on and so forth and if a coherent images are there the pre and post event then uh, uh, nice uh, interferograms can be created. So, measurement of travel path variations as a function of satellite position and time of acquisition allow generation of digital elevation models. This is another advantage and this is what it was done in case of SRTM. So, SRTM digital elevation models were generated using a simultaneous different two different look angles data acquisition and create interferograms and through those interferograms digital elevation models were generated for 80 percent of the globe. 
and the second one is the measurement of centrimetric surface deformation of the terrain. So, uh, the, if there is a, some change on the ground uh, that can also be estimated or measured. And this is the this is how the uh, is, is two uh, when two times the look to be two different angles the data is collected these two exam the example through this is schematic is there that uh, this is the orbit one say day one after 35 days again uh, the same area by is covered by but with two different angles and this makes the perpendicular baseline this is another very important factor that closer and the orbits the orbit 1 and orbit 2 are the smaller the perpendicular baseline better the interferogram one would be able to create because there will be good coherence in these two images. And likewise this is uh, the data is uh, acquired and uh, the distance between two satellites here or in plane, plane perpendicular to the orbit is called the interfero meter baseline or and its projection perpendicular to. So, this is interferometer baseline and this is perpendicular is the perpendicular baseline. Perpendicular baseline is more important uh, for interferometry. Now, the SAR interferogram is generated by cross multiplying pixel by pixel and remember pixel in case of uh, microwave remote sensing is a complex number. And the first SAR image with the complex conjugate of the second. Thus, the interferogram uh, amplitude is the amplitude of the first image multiplied by the part of the second one. Whereas, its phase that interferometric phase is the phase difference between the images. And this phase difference uh, will give you the beautiful results. Like this is one example from uh, bomb earthquake of uh, December which occurred on 26 December 2003 of having magnitude of 6.6. .6. And these two images were involved to create this interferogram. One was taken on 3rd December 2003 just before the uh, earthquake because on the satellite was on its regular uh, orbit. Nobody knew that earthquake is going to come. But it is, it is, it, it has acquired the data in normal condition, and again after roughly 35 days, again on 11th February, and uh, the satellite orbited the same area, and the baseline difference in this uh, example was only 0.6 meter, which was very ideal, and therefore uh, the, the coherency was established except for the areas uh, which has the some buildings and they were damaged and which you are seeing in these black portions. So, this is basically nothing but the uh, bomb uh, township was there and these fringes which you are seeing can give you the idea how much ground deformation has changed. Not only that it can tell you that whether ground has relative to the satellite the this uh, has gone in the uh, line of sight whether it has gone away or have come closer to the satellite. So, both things can also be estimated and this example if uh, we have to we have to see these count these fringes and see these fringes from center to going away where more concentration is there we consider as that is a center and then we count these fringes and see the their change in color. So, uh, if we start from this, uh, this is cyan and uh, yellow and magenta and then again cyan, yellow, magenta likewise and that is indicating a subsidence here. Whereas, magenta if we start from center again, so magenta, yellow and cyan then it may might be upliftment. So, there is a, these two looks very similar, but if you see carefully they are having completely different color pattern counting from and a, once we count a, the number of fringes then and multiply by half the wavelength. In this case the wave total wavelength was 5.6, so half wavelength becomes uh, 2.8 uh, uh, millimeter, uh, 2.8 centimeter and this say uh, you multiply. So, if suppose there are uh, there are 10 fringes you multiply by 2.8 uh, centimeter you know that uh, about 26 centimeter deformation has taken place. So, likewise one can completely measure how much deformation has taken place and in what kind of deformation has, whether there is a subsidence or 
uh, upliftment in the line of sight of the satellite. This is important to remember, it is not vertical one, but because say oblique data acquisition, so in the line of sight, though it can be converted to vertical one and this is that the vertical one which we will see little later. So, the main contribution to the interferometric phase is possible ground information and delta s affecting directly the sensor target travel path. The only the projection of the deformation occurring along the sensor target that is line of sight delta s los is appreciated by SR system. So, this can be calculated using this uh, equation and uh, this uh, line of sight displacement of wavelength y2 half the wavelength causes a full phase cycle and this is what happens. Uh, in case of uh, if we take the example of ground deformations, if there is no deformation, you will not see any fringe between uh, uh, two acquisition taken on two different dates. Maybe the difference generally in case of radar remote sensing or microwave satellite, it is the orbit are designed like that. There is a time difference or days difference of 35 days. If there is a deformation like gentle changes, then these fringes will not be closely spaced, they will be a wider spaced like. So, we, ca we can say that the, the changes are gentle changes, but when fringes are very close, then we say say steep changes which we are seeing here. So, if we go back again to the same image, here the changes are very steep and compared to this, the changes are very gentle here. So, this is the, uh, uh, the deformation map and uh, now it is not in line of sight, now this is in vertical component which we are talking. So, there is a, uh, there is a upliftment as I was mentioning here and, the, the, and this, is, this was the position of the uh, epicenter. So, there is a upliftment in this particular case was 30 centimeter in the, uh, of the uh, due to the earthquake and there were uh, subsidence in this part of 20 centimeters. So, you can say that half meter, def total half meter deformation in a very small area have taken place due to that earthquake event. So, measuring these deformations so accurately is a really very nice technique which is now being uh, 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 you know do uh, this is now being used in almost all each and every earthquakes which are occurring in different parts of the world because now data is available and that too it is freely available. Few more examples that in only not only in earth, uh, earth, uh, earthquake induced deformations one can imply, but the deformation which are little slower and this like uh, this is the example uh, because the over withdrawal of uh, ground water and uh, uh, over a Kolkata city the subsidence is taking place and that subsidence the example here of Kolkata city and subsidence can also be measured that how much subsidence is taking place. So, if you are having one year time difference or five year time difference satellite images of microwave region, you can create an interferograms and see that if what has happened in last five years or during that period. So, in this uh, yeah, one can estimate that how much ground deformations because of uh, over withdrawal of ground water has taken place. Another example of uh, uh, ground deformation which has happened uh, quite recently in 2015 in Nepal as you can see that in this uh, uh, Kathmandu valley uh, there were lot of uh, ground deformations all fringes can be seen and uh, there were two major earthquakes on occurred on uh, 25th April 2015 and then 12th May 2015 and in between these are the uh, ground deformations which has taken place. Now, again there are uh, more ways of analyzing. So, this is an, uh, the same example, but different dates one can involve and again one can analyze in the background digital elevation model uh, is also there. In case of bomb earthquake, one can also imply the two pass differential uh, interferograms or model this is on the right side we are seeing the modeled interferogram. So, 
uh, it was the real the co seismic deformation which has taking place in case of bomb earthquake was very close to the model uh, uh, interferogram and uh, these model interferogram can be created even beforehand if uh, we know that how big earthquake can occur and therefore the ground deformations can also be estimated accordingly so this is the advantage of having sar interferometry one more example uh, of uh, earthquake of 2008 occurred in china sichuan earthquake and that too has caused lot of ground deformation and that could be measured and uh, very accurately as you can see the fringes are here a ground deformation map is also here so this brings to the end of uh, uh, microwave remote sensing i have mainly talked about active uh, 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 microwave remote sensing not passive uh, microwave remote sensing and i have also discussed in length about the uh, sar interferometry which is which is has which recent in recent years has become really very popular and very very useful to measure the ground deformations which might be causing because of an earthquake event or maybe subsidence because of over withdrawal of ground water maybe in landslide studies and so on thank you very much